What are the lessons of our current political chaos in our presidential campaign? Well, uh, that's an inter enterprising and um, engaging question for us. We do delight uh, in the tangle, if you will, of energetics that is currently reflected as your political structure. Um, to begin with, it's the key word you used in that question was chaos. We, we perceive chaos to be the pool of all possibility. So, in effect, anything is possible. Uh, we're leaning and attempting to help other humans lean into this idea that um, I need to let go of my reliance upon uh, a male authority figure. Uh, whether that's represented in the body of a male or female human doesn't matter, but it's this idea that somebody who's smarter and more knowledgeable and more connected knows better than I do what's good for me. And that unfortunately has become too much of your government. Uh, this idea that um, an abdication of responsibility is in effect allowing, uh, inviting, requesting another to take over a part of your life. Uh, and what's happened is the pain of this is growing exponentially and you're seeing this reflected in more and more of the corruption that's coming to light. It's as if uh, there's a wound and even though it hurts and it's a little uncomfortable, people aren't really paying attention yet. But as it begins to become gross with the pain and with the infection and all the evidence of that, it's rather like having a wound on your body that's like, okay, I really need to get this looked at. Uh, and if you ignore it even longer, then it collapses and you're in for a major redo of the form of the body in order to have the chance of healing it. And that's unfortunately where we see your political structure at this point. There is so little truth involved. Uh, the messages that come through, we can be grateful for Donald Trump in that um, his messages uh, don't get as many filtrations as so many others uh, do, and that's part of his appeal. People long for some element of the truth. Unfortunately, we would say from our perspective, um, uh, Mr. Trump is rather like a gifted um, reporter in that they take things, he takes things out of a connection with the beginning and end of the story and only gives you the middle that you want to hear. He, he weaves a lot of fantasy and um, a lot of the bravado uh, into his comments. So they sound wonderful. Yes, it's a bad guy. We're going to put the bad guy away. Um, which just makes people that are actually working to uh, do that kind of work just roll their eyes and shake their heads and groan in frustration because he's oversimplifying. Uh, you have uh, some Democratic candidates, uh, in this case Hillary Clinton. Um, there's just so many underpinnings to her campaign. She's, uh, she's calling in favor upon favor upon favor. So people are not supporting her because they're in alignment with her truth of who she is as a leader. Uh, they're in alignment with, um, I owe you. And if I don't pay, I will. there will be punishment, if you will, discomfort, unhappiness. Um, I will be locked out of future uh, plum positions and rewards, uh, not only punished, but kept from the, the feasting table, if you will. Um, and both of these really support a rather elitist concept that's, that's become very prevalent in your political parties right now. Bernie Sanders is a breath of fresh air. It's quite fascinating that so many people are going, but he's so old, um, which is amusing to us as you know, we have no age, but, um, uh, but the idea that um, he is, uh, we believe it's six years older than Hillary Clinton, and yet he is perceived as being an old man. Um, we wonder how that rumor got started and by whom. Um, but he has the most aliveness in terms of his connectivity to truth. He has the most aliveness in terms of uh, truthful uh, knowingness of what can and can't be done. Um, it is, it is uh, phenomenal to us the, um, the degree with which the average citizen in this country takes for granted that somehow somebody else is going to figure out this whole mess. 
Uh, and that is the sad part to us because we perceive that it will, there's always probability and possibility in what's being created, but it's verging out of possibility into probability that there will be something along the lines of um, beyond civil unrest. We won't go so far as to say civil war, but there will be a tremendous upheaval uh, within the next one to two years where people realize, no, it's just more of the same. Uh, we're being lied to, we're being cheated, uh, we're being treated as uh, second-class citizens by our own government. Uh, and that people in power, that we've placed in power, are there because they misrepresented. And more, more than that, and worse than that, uh, they don't vote as I want them to vote, I the citizen that elected them, they vote per their mm, uh, agreements with other politicians. So any attempt to be of service to the individual citizen or groups of citizens is secondary and perhaps just, gosh, glad we got that in there when I had to pay off this guy for his favor, this guy for his favor, and I had to repay this lobbying group for their funding for my my political future. So the concept of professional politicians does not serve a democracy.